and today we're going to be taking a look at the Maytech F405 CTR. Now you might remember the name from the Maytech F405 all-in-one flight controller. This is basically the same thing, however it has some changes done to it. And this was this came out like maybe a couple months ago now. And uh, I never really got the chance to get one or pick one up and I finally just got one, received one. So looking at the board, to be honest, I wish I would have gotten one sooner. And I'll explain why in a bit. So let's first talk about the history of the Maytech F405 flight controller. Now this is considered to be the version 2. This is called the F405 uh, CTR. Now what's difference between what's the difference between this one and the old Maytech F405 is that this one, they have dropped the gyro down to the MPU 6000 because of the yaw twitch issues with some noisy ESCs on the previous Maytech. And what they've also done which really kind of upset me was the fact that they removed that beautiful 9 volt regulator for the VTX from the old one. So I guess it just probably had just no room in there. But however, what they did, they compensated with something else. And they've added the extra telemetry pads for your ESCs right next to the signal, which is just absolutely awesome, really. Um, so this is a huge plus here, just looking at it from the beginning. And they're using the Big Brother F405, not the little one, because there's two versions of the F4 microcontroller unit. There's a smaller one, there's a bigger one. The bigger, it has more pins, it has more inputs, and it's a little bit faster. The smaller ones are a little bit slower. I think they're capped at 100 megahertz, if I believe, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong, I just don't remember off the top of my head right now. Anyway, so let's talk about this. So this has a 3.3 volt regulator built in, a 5 volt regulator built in, and that's it. There is no voltage regulator like the previous one for the uh, for the VTX, the other one had that 9 volt regulator on board, this does not. So it's going to be expecting you to take your power for your VTX from the battery. Alright, so let's go ahead and start with the bottom here. Or before that, let's actually take a look at the arrow. So the arrow is pointing that way, so it would be installed in your quadcopter like this. So your battery wires or whatever you wanted to connect here would go off to the right. And if we take a look at the motor orientation, we have motor 1, 2, three and four that's perfect beta flow orientation usb will be up on the left side now as you can tell here the holes are a little bit bigger it's because of the uh, rubber gasket the rubber dampeners they provide you with uh this is how they work uh, i think this is like an m4 size hole and then you put those in then it can fit the m3 screw thus giving you very good uh dampening from uh vibration so that's very nice to see and the thing is what's so awesome about this is they don't just give you four they give you six they just always give you extra and they also did provide us with a low esr capacitor which is a huge plus all right so let's just take a look at the pads down here all right so we have a tx5 an rx1 and a tx1 so the rx5 as you could tell oh this is the tx5 sorry so the tx5 why don't you see an rx5 next to it it's because they're using the rx5 which is the uart5 for the telemetry so it's going to be the same one right here so if you were to go into the beta flight ports tab uh you would go to UART5 and enable telemetry for UART5. So that's how that would work. And your signal is right there. So that's why you're missing the RX5. It's because it's around all those. And here's a TX5. All right, so what do we have here? We have RX1, which is, this is UART1 right here, these two. We have the receive and the transmit. And what else do we have? We have a TX2 and an RSSI. And we have a S5. What is the S5? That's motor five. So you could put up to five motors on this. And nowadays with the resource remapping, you could almost put it anywhere also but that's very nice they also added that extra one so if you wanted to build possibly a hexacopter if we find the s6 then you, you can easily uh it's just already done that way so here we have a tx4 and a rx4 that's nice that's good we have a lot of uarts on this board we have two grounds two five volts and always they're keeping that same layout here an led this is the led data pad so this is what would tell the led to turn on and off and this is how you power off the led power on the led or off and uh, here you would connect your buzzer. However, you wouldn't connect the ground to ground. You would connect the ground to the BZ minus because the way it works, the buzzer um, is once this goes low, then it activates the buzzer. So yeah, just take that into consideration. The positive there and the negative of the buzzer right there. All right. So now let's take a look here. So we have an RX2 pad and we have a 3.3 volt regulator. We have another ground. 4.5 this I really never got it figured out what this was for but it was just never it, it would call us fail safes I remember one time I did it and it caused me a fail safe so I stopped using this 4.5 volt uh, pad right here we also have a ground 
and we have the sbus so if you're running sbus this is where you'd connect it and uh, the way i would go about it is I, I would not give it power from here for my sbus i would take 5 volt and put the sbus and put the ground right there and i should be good to go so as you can tell well actually let's take a look at the other side here before we continue on all right so we have a vbat and ground in VTX. So this is very nice. Again, the, instead of taking that red power wire for your VTX all the way from the battery here, you could just, you know, solder it right there. You're good to go. All three wires next to each other and you're good to go. If we take a look down here, they also added the camera, five volt ground and the camera yellow wire here. So the yellow wire from the camera would go here, pop into OSD. I think it's on the other side and then come out to your VTX down to your goggles. You should be good to go there. We have another two ground pads here. And we have a TX3 and an RX3. And what is that right there? Is that a motor four? Oh no. All right, so we found motor six, it's right there. So you can build a hexcopter with this right there. There's a motor six right there. DAC, I kind of actually forgot what that was for, but I'll double check it in a little bit. We'll come back to it. All right, let's see what else we have. Like I mentioned, this has a telemetry option. So that's pretty nice, which is right there, the RX five right there. It's just so awesome. Uh, this I didn't, I didn't actually I did not know this had it. That's why I was just so excited when I saw it. And as you can tell right there, we have a current sensor, F4 flight controller, and we have our boot button right there. So let's flip this guy over, see what else we see. Oh, I didn't even know it even had an SD card expansion. So you also even have an SD card expansion. You do have a TVS diode. Those protect against high voltage, kind of fish. It's very good. I mean, anything extra to help with that is a huge plus. We have our OSD right there. And we have, I think, a barometer right there. There's a barometer. Last time I got it wrong, everyone went crazy. Um, I just, you know, it's so far away from me. I'm mistaken. They both of them look like like the uh, crystal clock here and uh, the barometer. So you do have barometer for altitude hold. Once you connect this with the GPS, as you can tell, you connect it with GPS right, right here. You got your SDA and SCL. And this might go on a GPS build. I do have the equipment to make a GPS build, but I just never really gotten around to it. And we have motors one through four here again and a five volt on the ground if you ever need it for anything else. And overall, that's really it. I mean, it's a really nice board. It's 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 well made. I mean, when you when you touch a PDB or a, something from Maytech, it even the black is nice. Like it has this like black grayish. I don't know. It's just I don't know, something about it. I think th they really do uh, put real effort in, in, into their products because they're just awesome. Yes, they had a mistake with the old Matic F405, but you know, uh, it's a sensitive gyro. It's new territory they were stepping into, but it just backfired on everyone. Uh, because you know, some ESCs, at the, the ESCs at the time when that came out, there wasn't really any super, super good ESCs like we have now. Like for example, the Tico 32, stick a Tico 32 on any Matic F405 with an issue, boom, it's gone. You'll have one of the best flight times in your, in your life, I believe. So yeah, take that into consideration. However, this is using the less sensitive gyro, which is the gyro that's going to be compatible, which is compatible, which is what we all love and uh, kind of want. So you're just going to be stuck with an 8K gyro loop frequency maximum because the gyro is the MPU 6000. And overall, that's really it. Nice little board. Uh, it does come with a low ESR capacitor. Let's actually see what it's rated for here. So it's rated, it's a Rubicon. 35 volt, 470 microfarad low ESR capacitor. That's very nice of them. They always add this in. So that's a huge plus. And this I really love. Now, what is this? This is just like an extra PCB. It's not conductive. Uh, so you can actually use it like a separator. And what I usually tend to do sometimes, I'd cut this in half. This way would be better. I would cut this in half and then have a half a stack where I could just place my receiver or whatever it is uh, right there and it'll just be very nice and uh, it'll keep it overall stack instead of having the you know trying to put the receiver somewhere else or you could even stick your vtx here as you can tell you have little holes you can zip tie it here you can do all kinds of crazy stuff with this and you can get creative so i really like this i just save these to the side always it's a huge plus i mean they really don't have to do that but i think what they do is they give you this instead of the xt60 connector because they've never given me an xt60 connector in maytech so yeah and if you guys are curious about this i'm pretty sure i'm gonna get a bunch of comments for this this is my new frame i designed it from zero and i just recently cut it and flown it uh i'll have a video up on it later on this is the first prototype of uh, made out of carbon fiber i've had other prototypes which were 3d printed and uh cut out of mdf and this is the first frame ever. It's called a split sane. It's a three inch split level. 
and it takes 11 XX motors only right now. And this is a two millimeter. I can make a three millimeter, but I wanted to reduce weight. That's why it's two millimeter. So if you're crying, oh no, I wouldn't get two millimeters. I could also do two millimeter, three millimeters. That's not a problem, but it's full weight with the props here is 84 grams. And this thing flew insane. It was very nice. And uh, we'll get into that later on and I'll show you all the footage. I'll try not to talk because, you know, I made it. So I don't want to, you know, be like, oh, you're just saying that because you made it. No, no, I'll just show you the footage and show you everything. And then you guys decide. But overall, I could tell you it flew very, very, very good. Very good. It was very floaty. Like it was just, you know, punch out. Whew. It was just insane. Anyways, we'll come back to this in a later video. I think probably in the next video. I took it out today flying. I ran into some water and uh, I had to stop flying. So I'm going to go try it out again tomorrow and get more footage for you guys. And overall, that's it, guys. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, please consider joining my Patreon. It will support the channel. I'm having a lot of giveaways this month, so don't miss out. It's going to be pronounced at the end of the month. Uh, usually the first or second of the month after. So like, you know, in a couple days, I'll announce the winners. Jeb RC, one of these frames. And by the way, Patreons get, uh, the, if you know, if you also want to support the channel, you could also purchase a frame. I'm only making a limited quantity, anywhere between 30 to 50 frames. That's it. And obviously, if something breaks, I will recut you a piece. That's not an issue there. You don't have to worry. But I'm only making a limited quantity and it's just to support the channel. I'm not trying to do this as a business, but I just really want some kind of support to come into the channel. And at the same time, we all benefit in a way. I mean, I'm going to make sure it's super nice. It's cut. It's designed everything by me. It's not done anywhere else. I do everything in this workshop here. So that would be great support for the channel. And I'll have more stuff coming on, more mods for frames, like six, seven inch arms for specific frames, like the frog, maybe a new upper plate, just all kinds of crazy stuff. I don't know yet, but this is this is my first creation of carbon fiber, and I'm very happy with it. It needs some minor modifications. I'll show you guys in the next video, and we'll get into that later on. So let's put this guy to the side. It's 84 grams, by the way, fully built like that with the propellers. And well, that's it, guys. So that's going to it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And um, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.